Hey guys, Brandon with Flying Miata back for another FM Live. Today we're going to talk about reroutes. We've got some exciting updates and such. Uh, now, as always, you have questions, drop them in the comments. We'll get to them hopefully live. If not, we will get to them after the fact. So first off, let's go over what a reroute is and why you want it. So with the stock setup, the coolant comes into the engine right here from the radiator and then it comes out the front. Sorry, we didn't set this up very well. Um, and then it comes out of the front of the engine. So basically coolant comes in here, kind of does one of those and then comes out here. Now there is flow through the back, through, the here, through your heater core that comes back in right here. Uh, but generally speaking, the flow is kind of in from the front out from the front as well. So your rear cylinders don't get cooled very well. So you want to do exactly what Mazda did when this engine was in its original application, the 323, which is in the front and then out the back in our uh, uh, orientation. So we can do that with a reroute. Um, there are lots of different ways to do a reroute. Some of them are scary. Um, some of them are very good. Uh, this is our way of doing it. So you can see this piece right here, <clears throat> bolts on the back, back of the head uh, in place, uh, basically the heater core outlet is what it is. Um, has good fit with the EGR pipe, uh, has all of your sensors. It's got room for your stock sensors in there. Uh, your heater core comes out of here. This is a, a kind of junkyard engine that we use for testing lots of things. So apologies for it being a little ugly, but that's the idea there. Now, one of the really cool things about our reroute, um, you know, kind of the, the, the big benefits to our reroute, it's a single piece. Uh, so there are no extra uh, pieces that bolt together and might leak, probably won't to be fair, but might leak. Um, the thermostat is right in the head. Uh, there was one that we used to sell that had the thermostat kind of here. And it was okay and it worked, but there you had to kind of figure some stuff out to get the thermostat to open back here. And it was a little slow, whereas this one right in the head, ex uh, it, it behaves exactly as it should. The big thing is the turbo. So if you've got a turbo, what typically happens is that you get uh, water from the engine, it goes into the turbo and then it, and it gets very hot in the turbo and then it goes right back into the engine. So that's bad because you're putting hot water back into the engine. So you're hurting your cooling uh, there. With our setup, it comes out of the engine, goes into the turbo, gets very hot, and then it goes into this port on top, back into the radiator via the upper radiator hose instead of going straight back into the engine. That uh, makes a substantial difference to your cooling. So, and you can see this is, this is our reroute kit right here. See this beautiful machine piece, five axis machined in the US. Very, very pretty, very complicated to machine, but done extremely well. Um, custom gasket, so it matches the shape right there. Thermostat, all of your hardware and such uh, comes with a thermostat lock off plate if you are leaving the neck of the thermostat uh, on. It also comes with a head block off plate if you're gonna remove that neck altogether. So new and updated, I say, yes, new and updated. So we have uh, basically two, two new updates. So we have these hose brackets here, uh, which are 3D printed out of uh, the Onyx material that we use. It's carbon fiber reinforced nylon, very high heat deflection point chemical resistance. We've, we've been using this for a long time and it is excellent stuff. So, and it comes with hardware here. So there's an NA version and an NB version. Um, I'm kind of a nerd for the NB version here because it allows us to really use the advantages, advantages of 3D printing. Cause you can, I don't know how well that's coming across, but this is a little twisted relative to the base. So this base is square where the intake manifold bolts on but then this holds the, the hose at a little bit of an angle, both this way and this way, relative to the intake manifold to point it exactly at that radiator inlet. So kind of fun to be able to do that. Um, and I will show you 
what it looks like over here. So it goes right here. Um, that's where the bracket holds. You can tell it's very solid. Um, you don't need any kind of zip ties or hose clamps or anything weird. Well, I can pull the hose out of there, but it is not going to pull out on its own. And it holds it perfectly right there. You can see it's got good clearance on the throttle wheel. Um, and we actually have uh, hardware, well, on, it's not on the scarf, but anyway, hardware to move these relays inboard a little bit. They can be a little more of a, uh, of an interference on other cars, such as my 96. So it, it uh, just improves the fitment and holds it in place much better. And the NB1 doesn't need this hardware. Uh, the bracket, again, looks a little bit different, but it's the exact same concept. So the other thing, so reroutes have always been very good for cooling and putting stuff back to the way Mazda uh, intended for it to be and all that fun stuff, but they've been pretty clumsy for upright radiators. So the right answer is to get a crossflow radiator because they do cool dramatically better than stock uh, style or upright radiators with the tanks on the top and bottom. But if you still have one of those, here you go. So this little adapter hose, um, you can see it's got uh, tight bends for clearance, but not so tight to really make a, an appreciable difference in flow. Uh, it's also a little bit long on both ends so that you can cut it down however you need to for, for your application. But basically it, it helps get it from right next to the intake manifold and then around whatever intake you have there and into the normal inlet for that radiator. So works very well, uh, comes with a coupler, comes with hose clamps. So easy peasy, and it does fit with uh, stock spring clamps as well. So you're gonna reuse the hose clamps that you already have, or hose clamp that you already have on the radiator side of things. That's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, brackets, adapter hose, I would argue the best reroute on the market. Uh, so we have a handful of questions here. I will go through those first, and then we'll go uh, to see if we have any live questions. So what exactly are the differences between this and the original kit? So it's the exact same. So we did, um, we we're kind of quiet about it, but we did move to a custom gasket here a while ago. So we've got this custom gasket you don't have to cut. Um, we did that a while ago, just normal update. Uh, and now the only differences are the brackets and A or NB, and then this upright adapter hose. Uh, they are identical. Otherwise, we did manage to keep the price where it was, um, which was a struggle, but you know, there you go. You're welcome. Um, we do sell these pieces separately. So if you already have uh, this reroute, there's no reason to buy it again. You're just going to get the exact same thing plus these parts. We sell these parts separately. There you go. Look, the next question, will these new pieces be sold separately? Can I buy the new pieces separately if I already have the old kit? Yes, you can. So there you go. Easy. Again, uh, if we already have the old version, do I need to upgrade? Is there anything from the new kits I should get? So, uh, no, again, same, exact same thing. If you have a cross-flow radiator, this is completely pointless. You don't need it. Um, if you are happy with your hose routing and such, uh, then you don't necessarily need it. I do like these. It's okay without it. It's better with it kind of thing. So, and they're not expensive. So I would recommend this, but I'm also not gonna tell you you have to have it. Your car has been fine uh, without it for a long time. Is the reroute recommended for a daily driver? I'm gonna say it's not a bad idea. Um, I'm gonna say that you don't have to have it. Uh, your car is not overheating. It's probably gonna work fine. I will also say that the temp sensor, both for the gauge and for the ECU, are in the back of the head here. So they are already giving you your worst case temperature. So the distribution, the difference in temperature between the front and the rear of the head is not as consistent as it could be, I suppose. This is gonna be kind of overcooled and this is gonna be undercooled. Is that catastrophic? No, it'll, it'll continue to work fine. Is it a bad thing to get a reroute? Also, no, um, the reroute is beneficial. So, but, but again, for a daily driver, the need drops a little bit. Now, if your daily driver is a 300 horse turbo car, yeah, I would absolutely recommend the reroute. If your daily driver is a 90 horse, totally stock car, meh, it's not gonna hurt, but you probably don't need it. Will this work on automatic Miatas? Yep, no difference, easy peasy. Why is the cover for the timing cover after blocking off the thermostat neck not included? So 
anecdotally, most people are going to um, install this. Maybe, let me back up a minute. So what they're saying, we have this piece that blocks off the, oh, the spinny bit is on the other side. Um, so we have this piece that, bit, that blocks off uh, the thermostat neck. So that plate goes here. So you're still gonna have this neck that sticks out. If you, we also include a plate that goes on the head in there uh, if you wanna remove the thermostat neck altogether. And we also have a plate that we probably should have installed on this, just a 3D printed plate that covers this. And what they're asking is why don't we include this with the kit? So we, um, we, we, we need to make it an economical sellable thing, basically. So uh, most people, I'm gonna guess anecdotally, do this because it's much easier. Um, we do include this with the kit if you want to, uh, and if you want to add the other piece, it is available, but it is not included because most people probably don't need this and don't need that 3D printed piece. So hopefully that answers that question. Not very expensive if you, if you want that one as well. Will this cause issues with the engine not getting up to temperature when it's cold outside? Probably not. Um, we have heard a few stories of having check engine lights because of the colder, uh, because of a, a delayed warm up kind of thing. We use a 180 degree thermostat in the, basically we've been using them forever in Miatas. Um, and with some cars, they're gonna be a little hypersensitive to that. We do have a 195 as well. If you put a 195 in there, it seems to work just fine. So uh, if you have issues, 195, most people are totally fine with the 180. Let's see, does it matter if I have some other turbo kit, not FM, will this still work? Yeah, it should work fine. So this kit really has nothing to do with the turbo. Um, this will work fine either way. We have a couple of different kits to connect this to the turbo and that will probably still work fine with your uh, car or excuse me, with your turbo kit. But I can't guarantee it because I don't know what you have and I don't know all the specifics. So basically if your turbo, it's kind of hard to see with the heat shield in place here, but if your turbo is roughly in the same place as ours, uh, it should work fine. You can see the, the two coolant, really hard to see, but the two coolant lines right there running, run over here and then to the turbo. Uh, and we do leave them fairly long to account for different turbo kits, but do not take that as a guarantee that it will work with everything. Basically, worst case, if you still, if you have a 5 16 barb on your turbo kit, uh, on, on your turbo, and your turbo is in a dramatically different place, our kit will probably still work, but worst case, you need to get new 5 16 hose, and then it will work just fine. So, assuming you have a water-cooled turbo. If your turbo is not water-cooled, uh, then no, it will not work because it can't connect. <laughs> Okay, is a reroute even necessary on the BPZ3? Doesn't the head gasket change allow for sufficient cooling alone? This is a question we get every time the word reroute comes up. So uh, I would still do a reroute, personally. I would say that because of the head gasket, it is a little less necessary, but I would still do it. I would also say that you don't have to change the head gasket on that engine in order to use a reroute. I would also also say that if you are changing the head gasket for some other reason, for some other reason you have the head off the car, I would put the earlier uh, head gasket on there just because because now you don't have to manage the flow and kind of band-aid it, which is basically what that head gasket is. So hopefully that answers that question. You can mention a link to the video where I do the tech talk about it in the comments below. We have lots of videos uh, that I was going to get to in a minute about uh, reroutes, including the head gasket. Um, and there's a tech talk that Mike has done about it. So you can go there for more details, but the short version is you'll be fine. A reroute is still beneficial if you fall into that category of people that need a reroute. Okay, if I'm swapping a BP4W into my 93 or a 1999 engine, also to roll back, BPZ3 is the 01 to 05 engine, if you don't know. Um, I'm swapping a BP4W, 99 to 2000, into my 93, do I need to buy the NA kit or the NB kit? So you wanna follow the intake manifold that you are using. 
So that should be your answer, uh, presumably, I hope, you're using a BP4W intake manifold, which means that you need the NV kit in your NA chassis because the chassis doesn't have anything to do with it, basically. Okay, how much disassembly is required to install it? How hard is the install? Do we have an installation tutorial? Um, not a lot, not very, and yes. So basically, you have to take the coils off. Um, you have to take the brake booster pipe off here. Uh, and then it's not really that bad. It is awkward back there. It is tight back there. Um, it's not the easiest thing ever, but we have made it as easy as possible to do. And again, we do have videos. We've got actually a lot of videos on reroutes, whether it's about the design process, whether it's about installation, whether it's kind of a tech talk on cooling in general, uh, that kind of thing. But you know, we've done stuff like the, the bottom hole here is slotted. So you, you install this bolt to start off with, and then you drop it down and then you need to put this bolt in to start off with, but then you drop the whole assembly down um, and thread it into place. Uh, this gasket has adhesive on the back side of it, so it sticks here so you don't have to worry about it moving around. So um, it, is, it is as easy as we can make it. Personally, I don't think it's that bad. Um, some people will argue with me, but generally speaking, it's really not too bad. Uh, so here is a new one. Is there a way to route the return line to the hot side of the engine bay? I'd love to limit the radiant heat transfer to my ITBs, uh, individual throttle bodies. Uh, sure, anything's possible. Would I do it? No. Uh, so I understand what you're saying, and that, that is a new thing, I guess. Uh, so if you route it on the exhaust side, now you're heating your coolant. So you're not heating your intake air quite as much, but you are heating your coolant even more. And also the routing is gonna be extremely awkward. I, I don't know that it's physically possible without major surgery, particularly with, with our reroute, because you'd have to kind of go up and over, because the bell housing is right here, so you can't go down. So you'd have to go up and over somehow. You may or may not have hood clearance and then come through here by the hot exhaust. And then you'd have to come all the way back over to this side of the engine and then plug it back in. So is it possible? Sure. Uh, would I do it? No. Um, do I understand your concern? Yes, I do. So what I would say is silicone hose, because that's probably going to insulate it a bit as well, um, and a heat sleeve on the outside. Uh, and then if you want to kind of drop it lower, sure. Um, I would... I would be curious, if you feel like a science experiment, to see what your intake temps are with your current setup. And then, I mean, you can just use, you know, use a, a generic straight hose or something and just kind of band-aid it up and over, something that's not going to work long term, but just to see and see if there's any kind of difference. Bear in mind that you got to control all of your variables as well as you can, which you're not going to be able to, but get them as close as possible. You know, don't do this test in the morning when it's cold out and do this test in the afternoon when it's hot out because it's not going to give you any relevant information. So um, also be careful about overcomplicating your life. Um, again, my two cents, I would do a heat sleeve and I'd call it done. Um, the engine bay is a warm place. Uh, you've got all the, all of the hot air coming off your radiator, um, and your fans and everything just, just kind of blowing over the entire engine. Um, watch my cooling theory, cooling theory video for more information on that, because this is not an air cooled engine. Don't try to make it one. But anyway, I rambled on about that one long enough, short version, heat sleeve. Okay. That is everything I have ahead of time, Mike. Do we have questions? Yeah. Okay. Do we have lots of questions? Uh, we have one anyway. Okay. Is FM planning a molded upper radiator hose for a cleaner install? Is FM planning a molded upper radiator hose for a cleaner install? You never know what the future holds. Um, for the time being, this is it. It actually does work quite well. This is what I have on my car. Um, it doesn't have to make much of a change around there. 
and having this hold it in place does help with that. Uh, that said, you never know what the future holds, so we'll see. That's it. Oh, one question. That was easy. Okay. Well, as always, thank you for stopping by. If you have questions after the fact, drop them in the comments, or if you're watching this on YouTube, drop them in the comments and we'll get to them. If you have ideas for videos, let us know. If you like this, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. We will be back next week with another FM Live. Thanks, guys. Thank <laughs> you.